In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. For this great feast, one of the 12 great feasts, the Dominical Feast, the Feast of the Lord, the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in glory from his holy disciples and apostles and the, and the Holy Mother of God into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. It is a beautiful feast day. It's a touching feast day for me because it's for my home parish in Ascension, the cathedral in Oakland, California. Just hearing the Apolitikion brings back many memories of learning the Apolitikion in Greek as a little boy in our Sunday school from Mrs. Anna Canellis, who I believe is still the active organist there after all these years. And all the fond memories of being in the altar and the community, and what a beautiful community indeed it was. Well, this feast day is powerful. Think about it. God who assumed our humanity perfectly, completely, wholly, accomplished the divine plan of the Father in cooperation and the love of the Holy Spirit for the salvation of the world, suffered, died, resurrected, went down into Hades, defeated Hades for us, and then was with his holy disciples and apostles, the 12, the 70, the 500, the mother of God, and the mirror bearers, and the woman apostles. And imagine the joy they had for those 40 days upon the earth with the resurrected Lord, having gone through the crucifixions, watch him suffer and die and be humiliated. They were distraught, despondent, sad, and yet the women went to anoint his body, take care of him. But then when they found out that he was resurrected, imagine the ecstasy. and Imagine how they felt. Remember last Sunday at the Oyothinon Gospel, the morning gospel, the Orthros Gospel, which is a resurrection gospel, all of them? Remember how Mary Magdalene, one of the woman disciples, went to anoint him? And then when she saw that the gardener was not the gardener, but Jesus Christ, she yelled out, Rabboni, Rabbi, teacher. And she tried to grab him. She was so much in joy. She didn't want to let him go again. He said, don't, don't touch me yet. I must ascend first to my Father so I can send you the Holy Spirit. And that's why he ascended in glory. Remember, the disciples, how sad they must have been on the 40 days on the Mount of Olives when he started to ascend in the glory. And they probably said, Lord, don't abandon us, don't abandon us. But then they realized that what he said was true. I must ascend in glory to send you the paraclete, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to give you power and strength to endure the persecutions for the next 300 years which are to come. And indeed, come for the next 2,000 at least. For Christians were born in persecution and they're still persecuted around the world in different ways, in different places. But yet he sent the Holy Spirit as the comforter to give him the strength to endure and prevail. And then he sent Constantine and Helen, the saints, so they could be tolerated as a faith. And then they were supported as a faith. And then as a faith they spread from the Roman Empire to the four corners of the world by God's grace. But that is his plan, not to save one nation or one race or one tribe or one people in one place, but to save all peoples in every place and for eternity. Such is his great love. So on the one, one hand, below we have the apostles not wanting to be disappointed again and worried, Lord, please don't abandon us. But he didn't. He sent the Holy Spirit. In heaven on the other side, you have the angels. What is this? Who is this is coming? It's a man arrayed in red in human nature from blood. What is this man that's coming? He's the king of glory, great and powerful, mighty warrior. Open up the gates, open up the gates. Imagine the angels in heaven's amazement, the archangels, the angels, the dominions, the powers, the principalities, the authorities, the cherubim, the seraphim. And it was Jesus Christ, the God-man, coming up into heaven, seen at the right hand of the Father in the fellowship and communion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Greater than all the angels man is now through Jesus Christ. Imagine the amazement of the angels seeing man greater than all the heavenly powers because Jesus Christ assumed them, assumed our human nature and made it possible for all of us to go through the gates of heaven and be seated at the right hand of the Father to participate in the banquet of the Lamb with the chorus of the angels forever after in glory and happiness. Happiness which can know no bounds. A joy which cannot even be imagined, but we will be allowed to participate in through Jesus Christ one day by his love, mercy, and compassion for all of us. On this great day of the ascension, therefore, let us remember our true destiny, our divine ascent. 
through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, overcoming all things upon this earth, which are only temporary, even for the oldest of us who might live to be 100 or 110. What is 110 years when it comes to eternity? Believe in God. Spread the word of the good news of his eternal salvation in him and also for the salvation of our beloved creation. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Sad, it's no longer Christos Nesti, but Aneviotheos, he's ascended in glory, and that is beautiful and great too, for it must be for our salvation. God bless you one and all. Kornipola.